there's lots of lovely exposed mud here. I've found quite a lot of modern coins for the Thames charity box. It's filling up nicely. And also, down here, there is what looks like a button. Look. And indeed it is. Now, what is that? Oh, that looks kind of, uh, that looks really interesting. I haven't seen that before. Oh, I wonder what that is. Yeah, now that looks like it could be some kind of military button, doesn't it? I can see what looks like some ostrich feathers on there. I'll have a closer look when I get home. Well, this is a little bit exciting. Somehow or other, as I was walking past, I've seen what I'm hoping is a little bottle. And hopefully, a poison bottle. I, it kind of looks blue, but I can't really tell in this light. It's just here. And yeah, is this a bottle? And is it intact? This will be truly wonderful if it is. And is it blue? No. I'll be able to see better when I get it out of the mud. Oh, hold your breath, everyone. Still going down. Still going down. This is looking quite hopeful. It's looking very, very hopeful. I don't want to break it in the process bigger than I thought. Right. Okay. So we go. It's quite it's quite um, securely stuck in there. It's quite securely stuck in there. What is it? What is it? I think that's the end of it there. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera off a minute so I can make a little bit more progress. Well, look what I've got here. This bottle is intact and um, yeah, it's really unusual. I've not seen one like that before. Look at that uh, funny neck. I don't know how old it is. Maybe it's not that old. What does that say there? What's in? Let's give it a little rinse off. See if we can see what colour it might have been at one point. Um. <laughs> I think that's going to take a bit of cleaning. Let me put that in my bag and spend time cleaning it when I get home. And I'll see if I can find out more about the bottle as well. Watson. That is a very good question. What was in this bottle? I think I know what's in it now. Lots of mud. Watson. So I can see a coin over here, just down there, can you see it? Just here behind this rock, let's see what it is, it looks pretty worn, yep. That is one worn coin, but I think that could be a George the second or George the third. I think that's pretty fried. I've just seen something over there. It's really cool. It's certainly not ancient history, but this little fella 
Looks like he's been here for a while, judging by his appearance. Look! Now that's a star trooper, isn't it? Look at him! Well, hello there! You are going to fit right in to the found plastic toy department in my studio. Give him a little clean. Yeah, he'll fit right in. Well, it's fair to say that I've never found any Viagra on the Thames foreshore before. I hope they didn't take them all at once. Now, I've just seen something interesting down here. Let's take a closer look at it. It looks like a decorative little piece of metal just there, see? Now, what is it? What is it? Oh, oh what is that? <laughs> I've no idea. Do you know what it looks like? It looks like a, a little handbag, doesn't it? It looks like um, a little handbag, like a charm, but I don't know if it is. I don't know if actually that's a piece of metal that has been bent out of shape and that there would have been a stone in that bit there at the front. But I'm rather liking the fact that it looks like a little posh handbag. I shall investigate further at home. I'll put it in my bag. It's cute though, isn't it? Whatever it is. A little mudlarking mystery. Right, down here I just saw the edge of something poking through the mud. Can you see it just there? I wondered if it might be a shell at first. I've had an initial test and it's not a shell. I'm hoping that it's a really interesting lid. Look, it's just here, see? Now, <laughs> what can it be? What can it be? Could it be some kind of cool lid? Or is it going to be something very, very disappointing? Oh, I can hardly bear to turn it over. Ta-da! Ooh! <laughs> Look, it is a lid. I mean, it's probably not the most exciting lid, but I can see something on there. Shall we go and wash it off? Okay, let's go wash it off. I think it might be the lid to something makeup related. Maybe some blusher. How it ended up down here is anyone's guess. Right, let's just take a little look here. Oh yeah, it is look. Isn't that cool? Isn't that nice? Or it might not be. Oh yes, it's Yardley. Oh, I like that. Makeup lids are just so much nicer from yesteryear, aren't they? That is Yardley London. Excellent. I can see a pipe bowl poking out here and there is a giveaway clue that it is a pipe bowl from the Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffaloes because I can just see the beginnings of a horn there. Let's see if I'm right. Let's pull it out. Yes it is. Yes it is. There we've got the RAOB there. And those buffalo horns sweeping majestically to each side. They sort of look like a big moustache, don't they? 
There we are. RAOB pipe goal. I just pulled this bottle out thinking it was a little milk bottle which to be honest uh, wasn't really going to interest me that much because I've got quite a few of them but this one has actually got still the uh, the actual sort of lettering there on the front I've not seen one like that so I'm going to take that it's Express uh, Dairies and usually they don't still have that preserved on it, so that's quite special. Express Dairy. Sun Cap Fresh Orange Drink. Yeah, I shall take that home with me. I saw one a little further actually, just up there. Maybe I'll go back and show you it now that I've found this, because this one is Sun Cap and then so it's one up here if the tide hasn't already covered it up. Let's go and have a look. Which is uh, sun up. Right, where is it? It's around here somewhere. Ah, oh, yeah, I see it. Here it is. Sun up orange drink. Maybe I should take that as well then, and we can compare the two. I'm not sure if that's Express Dairies as well. Probably not. So, Sun Up and Sun Cap. Two sunny drinks. What's this? Now this looks like a glass bottle seal. Part of, anyway, with a name on it. Now this is exciting, I've got a few of these. It's broken where the name is, isn't it? No, hang on, I see, I see, Now that could possibly be Hoffman. Ooh, exciting. I see Hoffman. I see, I see Hoffman. Well, you know what I'll be looking up when I get home. What a thrilling little find. That could well have been attached to an old wine bottle. It, it looks a little bit too modern for an onion bottle, but then again, you never know. Probably 19th century, I should think. I see Hoffman. I'm coming for you, I see Hoffman. I'm gonna find out who you were. Now, can you see this colourful splodge here on the pavement? Do you know what it is? Well, it's not actually a colourful splodge at all. It's a little artwork and it's actually made from something really unexpected. These are made on bits of discarded chewing gum. And I've just noticed that the artist who does these, a lot of them on Millennium Bridge, is actually here. So I'm pretty excited and I'm hoping that he might tell me a bit about his work. There's one there. Another one here, they're so detailed. Well this is so exciting because I've long wanted to meet the artist who transforms discarded chewing gum into works of art. Yeah, oh well. You've, so you've, this is Ben. You've met, met uh, Ben. Um, you can call me the chewing gum man. The chewing gum man? Yeah. <laughs> I've met the chewing gum man and we're on Millennium Bridge and 
Oh, can you tell me about your work? Ben? Well, uh, for the last, well, for years, I've always been an artist. Uh, my yeah. father was an artist, and so so was my mother, and so it's in my blood. But um, the last 19 years, I've been transforming discarded chewing gum, which is the blobs, which are black blobs on the actual pavement, with, with well, within the metal tread of the Millennium Bridge, and then I change it into a work of art. That is so, just ingenious. You've turned something actually quite disgusting into something really beautiful. And yeah, that's the idea. I mean, and also it's the technicality. It's like finding no man's land. If you paint on the gum, then technically you're not defacing public property. So it's not under the jurisdiction of local or national government. That's very, uh, <laughs> very clever. And now that you've mentioned it, there's so much gum, isn't there? Yeah, sadly the gum's everywhere. Which is Look at common, that, there's, there's a little artwork there. Some of the pictures on the bridge go back like 10 years, but then I rework them. I use a little burner, a little blow torch to dry yeah. the paint off as I go along. Uh, and then anything can happen on that space, really. It's like, um, it's whatever, it could be a dedication. Or it could be a love message, you know, well, a dedication, any, anything from a love message to a rest in peace picture. But also, um, it can be anything from one's imagination, you know. Or just, it could be St. Paul's Cathedral, it could be, say, you know, here, it could be, you know, um, something inspired by a passerby. Do you I mean, find yourself inspired by the shape of the, the splat of the ah, gum? Yeah, yes, yes, I am indeed. Uh, the picture by its nature, it... it, it uh, the ethos of the work is that the pictures inform, the artworks informed by the environment. So it's obviously uh, determined by the shape. So I'm not going to paint on the actual bri bridge itself. I'm very careful not to deface. They can technically remove move the artwork, you know, if, if if they don't want it to be there. But hopefully it's taking something something horrible or negative and changing it into a positive. Do you have a <laughs> website or anything? Yeah, I do. It's uh, Ben Wilson Chewing Gum Man. Ben Wilson, <laughs> ChewingGumMan.com. Yeah. Well, I think that's the go-to yeah. website. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, fabulous. I'm so happy that I finally got to meet you and that oh. you've allowed me to interview you. Oh, it's a real pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Hi everyone, thank you very much for watching and welcome to my studio. I hope you enjoyed that little forage along the River Thames foreshore, if you can call it foraging. I mean, I'm not foraging for food, but I suppose you can still call it foraging for finds. What I meant to say, I think, was foray, that little foray along the Thames foreshore. But before I talk about the finds, what did you think of Ben, the chewing gum man, um, despite the terrible gale-like noises, it was a bit windy, so sorry about that if you had a bit of difficulty hearing that interview. Um, but for me, his artwork really is um, a good example of how the worst things, um, like chewed up chewing gum, even that can be transformed into something beautiful. And so I was just so impressed with his creativity there that I've long been wanting to actually see him. So. If you're ever in London and you're walking across the Millennium Bridge, do look down and see how many you can see. And the more you look, the more you'll see. I mean, there's got to be hundreds on that bridge. And uh, if you're really lucky, you may see Ben too. So if you'd like to find out more about his work, do check out his Instagram and his website. And a big thank you to Ben for allowing me to interview him on that day. So now to the finds. I have this great array of mudlarking finds here in front of me. And so let's start with the oldest ones first. And they are the coin and the button. So let's take a look at this button. Now, here it is. And it's made of pewter. It has the Prince of Wales feathers on there. Then the motto, Ich dien, I serve, just underneath and then the cardigan marked on it. Now, a few months ago when I found it, I did put it on Twitter and I had a few suggestions as to who may have worn it and somebody suggested the cardigan militia. Now, I think it's fairly old. I'd say 18th century or early 19th anyway. I don't think it's um, late 19th century. But if you have any idea, please 
let me know any military experts out there um i have done a search on the internet and i haven't come across any buttons quite like this made out of pewter i've seen a few modern ones made out of brass but uh, nothing quite like this so a nice little mystery button here so do let me know if you hold the secret to who would have worn this button and when here we have this coin which is very very thin and worn as is often the case when they've been washing around for hundreds of years in the river so I dipped this one in my electrolysis bath and the ghostly apparition of King George III made an appearance. So King George III, he reigned between 1760 and 1820. So it's a really nice old coin. Not surprising that it's wafer thin. And as always with coins, I love to imagine whose hand they were in or you know, who was holding it, whose pocket it was in before it was plunged into the muddy, dark depths of the River Thames, only to be found by me hundreds of years later. I do have a few coins, um, a few King George III coins, and so I'll put them up here on the screen so that you can see them. Unfortunately, I can't see the actual date. The other side is completely blank, but at least we have his, his little face here. Now, the next oldest object, I think, is this domino here. And what I really like about this is that it's clearly handmade by somebody. And I imagine that would be a sailor or an able seaman, somebody on a ship. Um, and back then in the 19th century, when I think it was probably made, the sailors certainly weren't allowed to gamble on board. And so probably this is something that would be hidden from sight in somebody's pocket most of the time, um, unless they were playing with it in some corner away from the, the captains and lieutenants. Anyway, that's what my imagination is telling me. So I also have, very similar to this, a whole big box of little lead tokens which I believe are gambling tokens here they are which I found over the years so very similar to this in that they're definitely handmade these ones are also a little bit like dominoes they're all punched with numbers some of them are round some of them are square so whether they were used like dice oops I'm not quite sure but Certainly, they were handmade by sailors back in the day, back in the 19th century. I'd love to be able to go back in time sometimes and, and see exactly what these were used for. It would be just wonderful, wouldn't it, if we could just go back and, and get the answers to all these questions that these mudlarking finds bring up. Um, but for now, our imagination will have to do. Now I'm going to move on to the pharmaceutical and makeup related finds. And I'm going to start with this beautiful blue bottle. That's a shame actually, that you don't get to see the blue as I'm holding it up like this. I think I've got a torch over there. I'm just gonna go and get a torch, see if I can shine it through. Oh, it's over here. Oh, let me get my torch. Right. Do you work torch? Yes, you do. Will this work? Um, can you see that? Yeah, look, anyway, it's a beautiful blue. It's a really stunning blue color. And what it is, is a Swedish hair tonic, which was um, made back in the 1920s. Watson's Keratin Hair Water. Now, of course, I don't know what's in it. Sorry, I had to get that in again. Um, but yes, isn't it lovely? Such a unique shape and a unique design. Um, I do have some lovely old adverts from it. And the description is um, that it prevented bacterial development in the hair and scalp. And it keeps hair healthy and tidy with a natural look. Absolutely perfect. Um, I think I need some right now myself. So moving on to another makeup related find or 
um, pharmaceutical sort of makeup y related find. I've got this um, lovely Yardley lid, which I have polished up a little bit. Don't you just think that the lids from yesteryear for all these makeup products, um, you know, and the bottle as well, everything is so much prettier. Now it's all so plastic and, and boring. I can't imagine that people will be collecting our old makeup pots and shampoo bottles in hundreds of years time and getting excited about them. But anyway, this is lovely. And, and I imagine it came from a pot of foundation or maybe some blusher, but what it did lead me to, of course, when I was on my research, uh, was some classic old Yardley adverts from the mid 1900s. And so I had to share them with you. I hope you enjoy them. They are quite funny and here they are. New powder gloss from Yardley for your mouth. Smooths out lip lines, makes light lip shines, smells pretty. Tastes pretty. Stir it up. Stir him up. New pot of gloss, lip gloss, from Yardley only. It's positively witty. Hey, are you mad at me? It wasn't like that. I love you. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. And you know that. Don't you? Because your eyes smile and sigh, Yardley gives you saw shadow. Brush on eyeshadow in soft emotional colors to blend with your soft emotional eyes. I'm gonna light up my lips. Set them aglow with Yardley's pot of gloss. It's wetter, shinier, glossier than ordinary lipstick. When pot of gloss lights up my lips, my skin, my eyes, my whole face seems brighter. Light up your lips with pot of gloss. Yardley, how to make the most of what you have. Oops, sorry, you're back. Um, I had to put some lip gloss on. How can you not put some lip gloss on after watching that advert? Anyway, moving on. Let's go to the food and drink related finds. And starting with this lovely milk bottle here, which um, I do find a lot of milk bottles on the River Thames and usually I leave them because they're often very plain. But this one is quite unique because for some reason, this lovely kind of transfer pattern here is intact and it is Express Dairy Suncap Fresh Orange Juice. And it probably dates to about 1950. So not terribly old, but still really nice and vintage. And it features Susie Suncap there on the design. So this is nice. It's probably one of the nicest milk bottles that I've found in my years of mudlarking. I, I, I do remember actually as a child in school, I used to get um, little bottles of milk like this. We used to have bottles of milk every day. And sometimes when we were lucky, we got orange juice instead of milk. So this does take me back a bit, but I do hasten to add that I wasn't around in the 1950s. Now the next food and drink mudlarking related find is here and it is this lovely bottle seal, slightly broken here, but there's enough of it for us to see that there is I.C. Hoffman on it. And indeed it does come from a wine bottle and it probably dates back to the early 19th century, about 1830 or 1840. And as I was researching I.C. Hoffman, I also came across some very nice photos of stoneware jars because he also made jam as well as wine. So that is the story of I.C. Hoffman. And last but not least, and very excitingly, the Star Wars toy who I found lost and disorientated, wandering around at low tide, not knowing what had hit him and looking a bit worse for wear. And he's not here with me now because somebody actually adopted him. Well, I did pick him up, took him home, gave him a wash. And as you can see, he polished up very, very nicely indeed. And I understand that he is an Imperial Storm Trooper, or at least he was. Somehow or other, he got separated from his ship and ended up in the River Thames for a good few years. I think he's quite vintage, 80s, 
Um, he's also, I believe, a Kenner Star Wars figure. So are you a Star Wars toy expert? I know that there's going to be some of you out there. Is he an Imperial Stormtrooper? And whilst I'm on the subject of identifying Star Wars toys, somebody gave me this. They also found on the Thames foreshore some time ago. And I think this is one of the more modern additions to the Star Wars family. Not sure who she is either. I can't remember. I did love the older Star Wars films, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, the modern ones, um, not so much, I have to admit, but I think this is a modern edition. And who is she? I think it's a she. We do find, or I do find, a lot of toys washed up on the River Thames. Lots and lots of plastic ones, like our little Imperial Stormtrooper. So do you want to have a quick look at some of my plastic found toys? Okay, that was a yes, I think. That was a definite yes. So I'm just going to quickly show you some of the other plastic toys which have washed up over the years. Starting over here. Well, this isn't Star Wars, but it's definitely out of space. We've got a little E.T. He's quite vintage too, I believe. And so is he, a little Beano character. I can't remember his name. Lots and lots of McDonald's toys. Strange little dog. I think he's fairly vintage. Winnie the Poohs, Minions, My Little Ponies, Little Ducks, Teddy Bears, Trolls, Peter Pan, Batman, Ninja Turtles, some kind of little hero figure there, a little doll. And she has, as you'll notice, this little perfect posh handbag, which you may recognise from my video, which I don't think is a handbag at all, actually. I thought that it might be a charm to put on a bracelet. I think it would have been maybe a brooch or something, um, and it's just simply been bent in the middle. But it's rather perfect for this little doll. A bespoke handbag, but I think she also needs some of that keratin hair water from Watson's. Don't you, dear? You're not looking your best there. And, um, well, this is a modern toy, actually. <laughs> I may as well mention her. This was made for me by a lovely artist called Jennifer Kelly. And uh, it is supposed to be me, actually. A mudlarking Nicola Barbie doll complete with accessories, including lots of pottery, an onion bottle, a swan, and bits of Roman pottery and everything. And then over here we've got Spongebob Squarepants, lots of Smurfs, loads and loads of ducks, Squirrel, Tom and Jerry, there's Buzz Lightyear hiding in the background over there, Angel Duck, Robot, Naked um, Action Man, Farm animals, babies, there's another baby poking out of a, a Victorian ink pot, Spider-Man. And this is my section for the soldiers, cowboys, Native Americans, all in perpetual battle with one another. So as you can see, our Imperial Stormtrooper is not the only toy to end up lost, bedraggled, washed up and disorientated on the Thames foreshore. There have been hundreds of others and there will continue to be hundreds more. I have a big box down there that I need to sort through. It's a real reflection of our plastic throwaway society. And I'm sure that some of those were genuinely lost by children over the years and um, many tears were probably shed. So I hope that it might give them a little bit of consolation if any of them are watching now to know that they're all very happy here in the Tideline Art Thames Orphanage for plastic and cuddly washed up toys. There is a home for all of them. But anyway, going back to Star Wars, when I was researching the um, information that I was going to share on this video, I realised that I have quite a few Star Wars little stories that I want to share with you. Any excuse to hang out with you all a little bit longer, so bear with me while I do just that. Firstly, here is a photograph of me a few years ago when I found a lightsaber on the Thames estuary and it was just all too tempting to practice my best lightsaber 
skills and you'll probably see on this photograph actually which was on the Thames estuary some of the plastic debris which is behind me and either side of me um, there are lots of toys washed up there for some reason and that day it just so happened to be a lightsaber secondly and much much better than the lightsaber story take a look at this photograph which has my stepfather Peter Carey in it now Peter used to be a cinema manager in East Ham in London and here he is sitting down with some of the crew of Star Wars um, the stars of Star Wars rather and so he explained to me exactly what it's all about so he says on the couch behind me is Kenny Rogers who is in the film and inside the little round robot called R2-D2 then there is C-3PO with English actor Anthony Daniels inside. And then he says, behind me, of course, is Mark Hamill, who was and still probably is Luke Skywater. Skywater? Did I say Skywater? No, I mean Luke Skywalker. Sorry, I've got water on the brain. River Thames water. OK, Luke Skywalker. I always actually had a bit of a crush on Luke Skywalker, I've got to admit. And then Peter goes on to say, note my slightly longer hair and dashing moustache. It certainly is a rather uh, dashing photograph, Peter. You wouldn't look out of place in a Yardley advert, it has to be said. Um, so, yeah, that, that's a wonderful photograph, I have to say. I'm surprised that I'm surprised you haven't got that up on the wall, actually, Peter. It's such a brilliant uh, photograph. And then lastly, here is a poster which has my son Angelo on it. He has been photoshopped into the Star Wars poster, again, by Peter, my stepdad, who's very good with all this kind of thing. Angelo, my son, was, and still is, I think, a Star Wars fan, and here he is as a little Jedi. But I have to say that now, years later, Angelo looks more like Chewbacca than a little Jedi. And it, funnily enough, talking of Angelo, he contacted me this morning and asked if he could share something with you. And of course I said, yes. I mean, as a mom, I have to let my son talk to my viewers about his forthcoming record. And so I agreed that I would give him a little spot on my video here, right at the very end. We may also be lucky enough to get some of a track of his at the end, in the closing of this video. So. I'm going to hand you over now to my son, Angelo. I have to admit that at the time of recording this, he hasn't actually sent me the two minute video. I said, you can have two minutes, Angelo, two minutes. He hasn't actually sent me the two minute video yet. So I'm not quite sure what he's going to say. Hopefully it'll be something good. I think it's something about a record which is coming out. So I hand you over to my son, Angelo. But before I do, I just want to say to you all, thank you again for watching my videos. You're all absolutely amazing, brilliant, kind and lovely. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I'm very fortunate. In this world of social media and YouTube and Facebook and what have you, you can get people that put really nasty comments down. And on the whole, I'm really fortunate with my community, especially on YouTube. I find everybody to be really kind, engaging and inclusive. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. It is just lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you too to everybody who has donated to my Kofi account. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all a wonderful week ahead. Now, over to my son, Angelo, otherwise known as Chewbacca. See you soon, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Uh, you might have seen me in a few of my mum's videos. Yes, I am the son of Nicola White um, and a very proud son at that. And I've got a few things to say. First of all is just um, thanks to my mum for allowing me to do this quick little video uh, for you guys today. And uh, secondly, I just want to say how proud I am of my mum uh, for accomplishing so much. And uh, it's so amazing to see how many people she makes happy uh, across the world. It's, um, it makes a very proud son, I tell you that. Um, but I'm doing this video today uh, 
because uh, as many of you might know, I am in a band called Collateral. Um, and uh, my mum has always believed in what I've wanted to do uh, since I was a kid and has always told me to, to you know, go and chase my dream and, and I have. And I'm asking all of you today, we have got a new album coming out on the 21st of October and uh, it's got the potential to hit the UK charts. But in order to do that, we need as many of you to help us by pre-ordering the CD. And uh, to do that, uh, my mum has probably put the link in the description somewhere. All you need to do is scroll down, hit the link and pre-order the album. Uh, like I said, it's coming out on the 21st of October and every single pre-order, every single sale uh, helps us get into those UK charts. And um, as many of you know, uh, the, the music industry took a, a big hit uh, after COVID and it's still trying to piece the pieces back together. And uh, the, the only way it's going to do that is, is by the help of you guys and... Uh, and just the togetherness of you know of the music world um, and uh, first of all I just want to say also thank you for everybody that uh, downloaded and, and bought our uh, first album you know that got in the charts and uh, that was that was amazing for our debut album so now we've got another opportunity so I want to thank my mum again for helping me out with this you know what a mother's for hey love you mum um, like I said, the link is in the description, uh, hopefully, and just go ahead and pre-order it. If you're the fan of like the Eagles, Bon Jovi, the sort of classic country rock, then this is right up your street. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you guys' time. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this whole video. I'm sure you are, because it's my mum. Um, so that's it, really. And actually, one more thing. In keeping with my mum's mudlarking, I walked on my local beach. I live next to the, the beach. I go swimming every day. As you can see, my hair's a bit wet from this morning's swim. And I found this, right? I hope that you can see it. Yeah. And it's basically, it's on, on here it says W O W and then some fat for and then and invalid. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Checked it out on the interweb and it was a bottle made by a company called Viral in the 1890s uh, full of bone marrow, which was classed as a fatty food uh, that helped um, infants and invalids if they were sick. So look at that, in Ramsgate. That was in Ramsgate. How cool is that? Look, again. Amazing. So I'm sure my mum will, you know, dig deeper and <laughs> dig deeper, literally, um, and get some more information on it. But anyway, that's a fine. So that's it. Thank you guys for listening to my little rant. And uh, I love you guys. Keep watching, uh, keep subscribing. And uh, thank you, mum. And make sure to download and pre order the album Rewired by Collateral. We'll see you on the road. Love ya.